what is holding you back from pursuing your passions? What is preventing you from trying that something that you've always wanted to try, that you've always wanted to do? Well, I'm fully aware that sometimes there are obstacles outside of our control that prevent us from doing those things. I'm also fully aware that a lot of times we would rather make excuses than to start doing something. We see obstacles, we don't see opportunities. Sometimes opportunities show up dressed in overalls, holding a shovel and look a lot like hard work, and we don't want to do it. Before I really get going this morning, I want to recommend to you two books, uh, both by the same guy by the name of John Acuff. Very simple uh, titles to remember, so you can look them up later. The first one is Start, second one is Finish. Start is obviously about starting things. Uh, I love the jacket of Start because it has some phrases. Let me try to get them right here. Punch fear in the face. Escape average. Do work that matters. It's about things that hold us back. Things that keep us from pursuing our passions and our purpose. Now the book is a little bit slanted towards entrepreneurship or, and business or even just jobs, maybe making your side hustle, your full-time career, uh, but it also references maybe that's not what you want to do, but you, there's this hobby you've always wanted to try and what's keeping you from doing that. There's a lot of things in there that apply to everyday life. Finish has the tagline of give yourself the gift of done. Some people don't have problems starting things, they have problems finishing things. It's pretty interesting, uh, the book is based on uh, some research and some of the things that they uncover about why people don't finish. Sometimes it's self-sabotage, uh, because if I finish, now what? Uh, I read both of those books uh, back in April, and uh, at times they were a little bit hard to read because I felt like Mr. Acuff was uh, speaking directly to me, uh, maybe trying to hit me over the head with his books, punch me in the, in the face instead of punching fear. They were kind of eye-opening. I mentioned both of those because we may go back and forth a little bit with some of the ideas. I want to focus a little bit on the start idea and trying to get started with things. I've known my wife for almost 25 years now. And in that time, I have come to her on several occasions with an idea. Sometimes it's just a thought. Sometimes I'm like trying to sell her on an idea and I'll pitch it to her. Uh, and there have been occasions where she's kind of looked at me when I pitched the idea to her and was like, um, so and so already did that. Oh, okay. Maybe that's where the idea came from. There's been times that she's kind of looked at me and it's like, okay, good luck with that one. See how it works. See some smiles over here. You've probably experienced that. There have been other times that, uh, and somewhat recently, I've pitched an idea to her. And uh, regardless, she's always my biggest supporter. But she's going to tell me the truth. When I pitched an idea to her, she's like, that's great. There's something to that. You need to get on it. I haven't gotten on it. Most of the ideas that I've pitched, whether they've been good or bad, uh, are long forgotten. Some of them are hanging over my head about why have I not started these things. Some of the things I'm going to tell you in the next few minutes come from my own life and that I've experienced. Others will be things that I have observed in other people or have talked with other people about, about why do we not pursue Excellence. Why do we not become awesome? Why do we settle for average? We weren't created to be average. We were created to be awesome. But why do we not do it? Again, because a lot of times we don't want to put in the work or there's some fear. Here's some of the common things that I have heard over the years. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I'm good at. Okay, we'll figure it out. Figure out what you like, figure out what you're good at. Now there's more to it than just me telling you to figure it out. You can start by making a list of things that you think you're good at, things you want to be good at, things that you think you may like, but you need to try those things. 
and start, he talks about trying as many things as you can to see what you're good at, to see what you like. College, and particularly your college, is a great place to try a bunch of different things. Maybe you've always wanted to be in a play, but you've been too scared to be in a play because all you know about being in a play is the lead actor and actresses, and they're up there most of the time, and they have all these lines they have to memorize. But there are also people, in some of the plays I've seen, they don't ever talk. They just kind of wander around aimlessly. Or sometimes they only have a few lines. And you may do it and find out, I love this. Why have I never done this before? You may find out that you hate it. That's fine. That's right. You may want to be a writer. you never really written anything before. 101 words maybe for you. Give you an opportunity to test the waters there. You try a bunch of things. You'll find out what you're good at and what you like. There may be some things that you discover, oh, I thought I was good at that, but maybe I'm not really good at that. Maybe I don't want to be good at that. Maybe I can't because of my natural limitations. I can't become good at that. You may find, oh, I'm really good at this, but I don't really like it like I thought I did. You may find something that you're not good at, but that you like. And now you've got to figure out how you're going to improve on that. So the things that you find that you're not good at or that you don't like, cut those out. Edit your life. Take those out of contention and try again with something else. Try to make your strengths and your passions line up. You may also discover new things from that. I really didn't like this one thing. Maybe I was so-so at it. But there's this other thing that's related. Maybe you should try that. Once you find something that you like, something that you think you're good at, then is the time to start working on that. Second thing I often hear is, I don't know where to start. I can totally understand that reasoning, not knowing where to start, particularly for somebody as old as Dr. Mountjoy. <laughs> you have an advantage that he didn't have, and that a lot of us didn't have. I don't think not knowing where to start or how to do something is a, a good reason anymore. I don't know how many of you have been down to the public library. You should go, it's a nice place. But you go to any library and there'll be shelf after shelf of how-to books. At-home taxidermy. How to make jello salads. I don't know, but there's all kinds of things. And in the world you live in today, you don't even have to go to the library to learn how to do something. You can look it up. You don't even have to sit down at a computer. You got this little magic device in your pocket, most of you. Simple internet search will tell you how to do a lot of things, where to start. Simple internet search will uh, come back with way too many hits for you to ever look at. But some of those are going to be good information. It's going to tell you how to start doing something. Somebody will have talked about how they did it or how they failed. Uh, how they improved. It's an idea. So this idea of I don't know how to start, I don't know how to do it, I don't know where to start, it's really not valid anymore. You have to take the opportunity to figure out. You also have this thing, and this is going to be a, a wild idea for some of you. You can actually talk to somebody face to face. You can ask people, how did you get started in that? How do I do this? You want to write a book. There's plenty of people in this room that have written a book. They can give you some advice. You want to learn how to take good pictures. I'm not, he may not really want to talk to you, but he has to now because I pointed it out. If you don't know, Mr. DeHart is world-renowned photographer. I'm claiming it today that he's world-renowned, uh, so, so it shall be. You want to know how to take pictures, maybe you want to turn that into a side business, or maybe eventually you want that to be a real business, or you just want to learn to take better, better pictures. I know that he will talk to you about that. He will give you advice. You have to ask people for those type of things. Social media provides you with this too. I'm always surprised when I, I'm on Twitter, which is not a lot these days, but when I see somebody that's been successful in their field and they're answering questions, and some of them are very simple questions that I thought if you just Googled that, you would have got the answer. If you read their book, you would know. Um, you guys know I'm obsessed with barbecue. Uh, I'm going to say I'm friends with Chris Lilly, although I've only met him at World Champion Barbecue. We're friends. It's one-sided. He doesn't know I exist, uh, but we're good friends. But I look at that and people t tweet him all the time asking questions about what they did wrong or how to smoke meat properly and he responds. I see it with business people. 
They want to share their ideas. Don't hail them, but you may get a response that would be insightful to help you. Another thing that I often hear, and I put this in the category of 100%, almost 100%, we'll say 99.6% of a excuse is, I don't have time. I'm just too busy. Our society seems to value this idea of business, and sometimes we tend to equate business with being productive, and that's not it. When people sit in my office and say, oh, I didn't have time to study, or I didn't have the time to do this because I'm so busy, I always ask them, with what? Because I think most of the time that we're not as busy as we want to pretend we are, and we want to think we are, or because of how we are in society, that we always have to say we're busy. Because if I'm not busy, you're going to think less of me. That's not the case. But how do you spend your time? I recommend that you take a week and you keep a calendar of what you do basically every minute of the day. Now don't write in like, you know, 11.01 sitting in class, 11.02 sitting in class. You can do blocks of time. But keep track of how you actually spend your time. And after that week, go back and analyze it. And see how much time you may have wasted that kept you from pursuing your passions, from pursuing your goals, from starting your dream. It kept you from being awesome because you were too busy doing something else. I have students in my office and tell me they've had problems sleeping. And we talk about it, what has been going on. Well, they were, I was up playing video games till 3.30 last night. Okay, that's why you had trouble getting to my class. And the other things off here with uh, being too busy were watching TV. You know, I had to watch 18 hours of Netflix because I had to finish that show in one sitting. <laughs> Hanging out with my friends, a bunch of other things that I often hear. And there is value in some of those things, time to decompress, and don't get me wrong. But when you spend all your time doing that, you're taking it away from things that you could be doing, actively working, towards your goals in life. Because you're not always as busy as you think you are. Now there are going to be times or seasons in your life where you're legitimately are going to be too busy because of the demands of life to work on that. I was, came up here Saturday morning to uh, give the devotional for the volleyball team and as I was coming in, I saw Coach, Coach Burks and his family leaving. He's in a totally different season in his life. Your kids are young. And for me to tell you well, you want you to work on something, you get up at 5.30 in the morning, well, what are the odds that's going to happen? No, if he's up at 5.30, it's probably dealing with a baby. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, there are times I think I've said, oh, I didn't have time to get to that this week. Maybe I didn't do something around the house. And immediately for the past year or two, any time I say that, I think, okay, why didn't I do it? Why didn't I get to it? Am I making an excuse because I think I didn't have time or I just didn't take the time? I've got some projects. I talked last year in chapel about my new hobby of woodworking. I've got several projects uh, that are in various stages of finishing my garage that I haven't touched in months. Well, I work, go home, spend time with the family. My kids go to bed, spend a little bit of time with my wife, go to bed. I'm not really sure my neighbors won't be firing up saws, sanders, and planers at 10 o'clock at night. So I have to find some other times. But we often have time, we just don't see it as time that we can be using to turn our life into something better. Something else I all often hear is, what if I fail? Okay, what if you fail? Big deal. Failure is not fatal. It's when you stop. Failure can be good. Failure, you started something and then you failed, it may mean you're not really passionate about it like you thought you were. It may mean you realize that I'm not good at that and I've been deceiving myself that I was good at that. You may fail at something the first time, the second time, the hundredth time, but each time if you're learning it's not failure because you're finding a better way to do it, you're figuring out your mistakes, you're improving on those. You keep working. The key here is not to let the fear of failure to keep you from starting something. 
related to this sometimes, and I know from my personal experiences, I become so overwhelmed with the details about where it's going to take to finish something that I never started to begin with. Something I've learned over the years is I don't have to have every single detail worked out. Begin with the end in mind, not in stone. Also, the starting line is the only line that you have complete control over. It's time to start. John Acuff says that what most people will give up on day two because day two is when the work begins. Day one is coming up with your idea of figuring out how you're going to be awesome. Day two is when we actually have to start doing it. But what if you fail? Who cares? You'll figure it out your meal. And they say research suggests that it takes 10,000 hours of doing something to master it. That is a lot of time. And sometimes we see people, uh, maybe, in, maybe your age, that are very successful at things, but they probably spent that 10,000 hours or more. It just means they started earlier. That's fine. The best time to start is now. Let's not put off till tomorrow what we can be doing today. You have to start. Noted speaker and author John Maxwell writes in one of his books, about situations that he has encountered over and over again. Whether he's at an event speaking and people are talking to him afterwards, or if he's out to dinner and people recognize him and they come up and they'll talk to him, a common occurrence there is people will tell them, him that they want to be a writer. And his first question back to them is, how many pages do you write a day? The vast majority of the time, the answer is zero. This is me paraphrasing his response. Well, you may want to start there. You want to become good at something. You have to spend time doing it every day. And you have to realize that at first, it's going to be bad. Sometimes you may luck up and you do something the first time and it's successful. But a lot of times when we start, it's going to be bad. It is a learning process. What Maxwell is saying, the only way that you're going to get good at writing and that you're going to become a writer is to actually start doing it. Quit talking about it and do it. There are a number of other ideas that go into this and things that may keep us from starting. But I'm going to leave you with three brief points and then I'll sit down. Start today, start where you are, and start with what you have. Thank you.